Hello everyone, welcome to a new van video and I know I think it might have been the last clip or the one before where I said that we'd be speeding up with these videos now well we had a little bit of a glitch and that was that uh, Chris caught the coronavirus so if you don't watch my vlogs, if you're just tuning in for the camper van videos you'll have known that already but yeah, so that held us up for a couple of weeks because he, he wasn't really in the, a fit state <laughs> <laughs> To put it mildly, he did not get, he was not one of these people that said, oh, it's just a, a bit of a cough and a temperature. No, no. He nearly died. <laughs> so yeah, so that's why there's been a bit of a gap between the last video and this one. Yeah, he caught it buying the wood for the cupboards from the nearest wicks. It was Yeovil. I thought it was Bridgewater. No, no, I never did go to the Bridgewater one. So moving swiftly on, he managed to get back to the cupboards, but they were a bit of a nightmare, weren't they? They were, yeah. I'm mm. the wood from Wix was. It was awful. Shall we do a duck sound and actually just say it? The wood it, from Wix was it, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Um, in fact, there is some video of some of the really bent bits. Yeah. Um, it was actually terrible, and because of the lockdown you couldn't actually return anything so we just sort of had to make do with what we were given I wasn't allowed into the shop to pick it up and wasn't allowed to take it back when it was rubbish no so we just sort of had to make do that caused a lot of problems especially as we went for a design for the cupboard doors it was important that everything lined up everything had to be reasonably exact for, for the cupboard doors to fit mm -hmm. um, we had to do all that to fit round our uh, skylight so that sort of forced us into that particular design. To make them, first thing we did was we just made up some framing, which we put up sort of directly as we went, sort of measured as we as we go. We didn't really plan too much or work out exactly what size we wanted. It was just sort of that was about the right size for the gap that we'd got. We did then change our minds on the size once and had to. Oh yes, I'd forgotten that. Yeah. yeah, we started with them much wider and then standing where the kitchen area would be we realized just bending over to cook it was a bit of a it was it was close to yeah. whether i'd be hitting my head on the corner of the cupboard it, yeah so yeah you had to undo it all yeah. and I make mean, it a bit narrower there was, was a bit of discussion about just making the cupboards change shape at that point or size just for the kitchen but yeah, I mean, we had measured it already. It's not like we went yeah, no, it this wasn't completely. Blind. No, it wasn't. Um, I'd stood there and we'd sort of dithered and it seemed okay, but yeah. then when it came to it, it, it wasn't. No. So we made them narrower. Yeah, so it took a long time to, to get them right, unscrew them and move them a little bit and clean mm -hmm. them off. And they're not perfect now, but they're close enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're fine. So, did use some of the leftover uh, tongue and groove from the roof to actually d make to back the doors. Just means the doors are a bit ugly from the inside, but no one can see that unless they're open, so it doesn't really matter. Also, went with piano hinges across the top of the doors. Again that proved to be a lot more a lot more trouble than than I thought it would be yeah. um, and again it was because of that that one um, oh, that one skylight that one skylight I did choose doors that opened upwards yeah rather than outwards because it just keeps them nicely out of the way so you can keep them open if you want you don't have to be yeah. constantly dodging around quite long doors that open sideways I didn't want that so. no no so it was it was by far the most difficult job we've had to do. They fit exactly the criteria that we we were after. Then. So I think it was worth it. So we um, got uh, gas straps to keep the doors open and hopefully keep them closed, although that's still to be seen. Uh, the first lot we bought were too long, so you couldn't actually quite shut the door. So we bought some much, much smaller ones and these fit lovely and they, they work really well. They still well. seem strong enough, they seem yeah. fine. They keep it open, they seem to keep it closed. Mm. Although we'll have to see when there's stuff in them, we might need some catches as well. But I think that... Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. When you go behind it and press, put pressure against it, it there's quite a lot of pressure yeah, back at your hand. I'm not overly 
worried. I mean, not enough yeah. to actually do the catches now yeah. anyway. Yeah, we'll so see. We'll see. Um, when all the food falls on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> then maybe we'll worry about catches. So once the cupboards were up, we fitted um, some reading lights to go over where the bed will be. It took us a long time to find those. Yeah, um, they're not easy to fit, but finding the right ones. Yeah, they're finding look... uh, even now we're not. Yeah, they they're are... the best of the what we could find. Yeah, we would have preferred something I don't know a bit more traditional looking. Really, I think. I think so. Yeah, they they do feel a bit modern and out of place. <laughs> yeah, but but they, yeah, they serve yeah. the purpose and and they all work well. So then I fitted uh, all the switches and the um, monitoring system. So I've built a um, monitoring system for all the batteries and um, the solar and the levels of the water gauges and things. It's all based off of a Raspberry Pi computer and it's running some custom software that I, I've done myself. And put a little screen in the side there with the, all the information on so we can see what's going on. You can also control a few things, um, but we've actually fitted physical switches for all the lights and the things that we'll be doing often. You don't really like touch screens and I'm, <laughs> I'm rather analog yeah I'm a bit of an analog person <laughs> <laughs> so we've got proper switches to it. one switch that I did that I thought was quite neat that I've not seen anyone else do is we've got a switch that will uh, lock and unlock the van which we've got in the back near the bed so if we get into bed and we've forgotten to lock it and we can't find the key you can just reach up and lock and unlock the van which is yeah quite neat yeah so getting out of bed when you've got it comfy and warm. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone's interested a bit more about the um, monitoring system, some of the source code for that is up on GitHub. If people are really interested, we could probably make another video with me showing exactly how everything was put together. But it's probably quite boring for most people. <laughs> so there's one other switch on that side as well, which is for a strip light that's underneath the cupboards that run, which will be under our kitchen. Yeah, so the cupboards got finished and then it was my job to paint it and as the wood was so cheap and nasty, I mean I've even got a clip of some sap coming out of it, like oh, yeah. it was dripping out of the wood, yeah. it was like, when was this cut, like yesterday, it has not been seasoned at all, it was, yeah, so I thought I ought to do a proper undercoat, I don't normally bother with that sort of thing, but this time I did, so uh, we had some grey undercoats in the shed, so that just went on. Then it's been sort of my struggle to get the paint colour right. I wanted a peach colour. Uh, the colour scheme in here so far is purple, I mean the purple velvet that was in the last video. Uh, the floor is like blue. I think the, cur the blinds are going to be purple and the cushions are going to be mainly blue. So I wanted a little bit more, something a little bit more girly perhaps, or just a little bit more, or bright and cheerful I suppose. We went with a peach, you were happy with a peach, mm -hmm. but I just couldn't find the right colour. I bought some cupboard paint, but it just wasn't peach was it, it was a proper pink. Yeah it was. So um, we didn't use that, we just, that was on a test plank, I got a test plank where I was testing everything. So then in the end I thought there isn't a lot of furniture paint on the market. So in the end I went with wall paint. So I just got with Dulux matte paint and we tried soft peach first of all. I've got a little clip of putting a little bit of that on but it was so pale. The next coat I did it all completely a darker colour which was called copper, copper blush. Copper blush. And that's a little bit too dark. So the layer on top of that I kind of, well actually I think I've got a clip of me explaining the sort of effect I was going for. Okay so I'm in the middle of painting the cupboards which has been quite difficult to get the colour right I have to say. I decided to mix the two up and do a blend using more of the soft peach um, in it to get a sort of paler peach overall and this is the effect so far it's not quite dry so some of the pale bits are highlighted because they're still a bit wet but you get the idea oh and first of all I nearly forgot I did put on a little bit of this crown addiction on the edges to get this sort of worn in vintage look which I've been going for I did a whole practice on a plank of wood. I never did quite get the effect I wanted, so I'm just doing it and <laughs> seeing how it turns out. So as you can see, it's um, sort of shaded at the top and will hopefully be sort of highlighted in the middle. Hopefully the end result will look all right. We'll, we shall see. If not, I'll end up just painting all over it, but it's fine, it's just paint, isn't it? So 
now to crack on and get this part done. Oh, and by the way, I am going right underneath as well. So I've done a bit of shading underneath. Actually looking at it now, I think I need to get in there and shade, blend it in a little bit better. It's just tricky to get it right. So they're not quite finished. When the cupboard's dried, a lot of the pale colour seemed to sort of pop out again. So I need to go back in and do a little bit more blending, but it's almost there, it's almost there. And I've got some wax to add as well. So we'll show you the finished cupboards probably in the next video. After the cupboards, and I think you're really relieved when those are done. I right? was, yeah, I really <laughs> had enough of those cupboards. He, he, it felt like you were doing them for weeks oh, on was, end. Yeah. And it was just constant. He just wasn't happy with the way they were, the doors were lining up. He was, he, you remade some of those doors. Like, multiple times. Multiple yeah. times. So yeah. that wasn't an easy job, was it? It was even another trip back to Wix to buy more bent wood because <laughs> that was the only wood that matched the wood we'd started with. So we had to oh, yeah. buy more of the bent wood. And it was so bent. It oh, was it like, was it was like buying sleigh. <laughs> yeah. It was like buying sleigh wood or nice pre bent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that was a bit of a nightmare. So your ne I think you're quite pleased to get onto the next job. Yes, I was. Which is making the bed. Yeah, so the bed itself, we decided, because we didn't want any supports in the middle, decided to go with uh, making it from metal rather than wood. So we bought the uh, Unistrut, which is the same stuff we used to make the roof rack with, because it's nice and strong and it's very cheap. So we, we bought six two meter lengths i think they were about seven pounds each that is cheap isn't it it is yeah. yeah and two of them we bolted to the side directly into the van itself so they are really strong they're really part of the you know the chassis now yeah on top of that we then put across four four rails that we're going to attach the slats to and it's yeah it's lovely and strong we've both sat on a single piece of the metal um, in the middle right next to it and it didn't feel that that was a problem and of course now all the slats are on and there are four of them the weights distributed about I think it should be a nice strong solution I yeah. don't think we need to worry about the fact that there's nothing propping it up in the middle so for the slats themselves we were going to buy Ikea slats in fact I drove all the way to Ikea <laughs> yeah on the first day open on the first it? no no it wasn't the first day open uh, it, yeah. no, but I did drive all the way to Ikea because they said they had them in stock on the website when I got there they only had a different size in stock not the size that we actually wanted so I didn't get them from there I came all the way back and then we were talking about it later on and decided that actually those Ikea slats whilst they look nice we think that we're worried that it was going to make us roll together more and yeah because it'd be two singles it yeah, wasn't like a double no um and as we're going to have two single mattresses as well we don't want to be forced to the middle of the bed so i went and bought some better quality wood than we bought before <laughs> from a, a local hardware store and the wood was great but we i bought wide pieces of wood for the slats but then we realized that when the bed was open the gaps between the slats would actually now be too big he hasn't explained that the slats are going to slide into each other so that the bed goes from a single to a double to a single but we've got a bit more of that to show you in a sec so yeah then luckily we had recently bought a, um, a new table saw i spent rather a long time putting that together to about three hours to put together so we used the saw to cut them all down in half and that seemed to make them just the right size really so then i put the bed together and took it apart and put it together and <laughs> took it apart uh, quite a few times luckily it was all bolts not screws so there was that wasn't too bad part of the reason was it kept getting jammed when it kept feeling rather difficult to open or to shut sometimes we couldn't figure out exactly where that problem was but it turned out to be a difference a slight difference in height in some of the spacings that um i put the back and after i fixed the, the sizes of all the spacings it all just it all just works and it runs really smoothly so we've got a little clip here of me explaining a bit more in detail about how the bed actually works so two of these rails are fixed and then the rest of the bed moves the two rails that are fixed are actually jacked up slightly higher than the rails that move. The rails that move are then resting on pieces of plastic so that they don't, so it's not metal rubbing against metal. There's some spacers under here, that's what jacks up the bar that doesn't move. 
and then we use little wooden spacers under here to make these slats go over the top of the bars that are higher but we don't need them on the other slats because those already those ones don't move so yeah that's how it all works um, and it seems to do exactly what we want it's, it seems good the um, mattresses aren't here yet so we haven't actually been able to put mattresses on it and lay down no they're um, on their way yeah hopefully so we ordered them from eBay and we went with we went with memory foam didn't yes, we yeah and it was a, an eBay company that um, did custom sizes yeah. So we'll certainly let you know if they are good or bad, but um, they seem to have positive reviews. In fact, I think from this video I might go back and edit old ones, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if I can be bothered, it takes a lot of time. But I will try and put links down below in the description um, box if you click show more to all the bits and pieces that we're using. Um, so if you're building your own van, hopefully those links will be useful. I expect some of them will, will be affiliate links which means that if you do choose to buy from there then we get a little bit of a commission but it doesn't cost you anything it's just like a, a thank you from the company for showing their products to you so I would appreciate it if you do use those links if you're building a van yourself yeah, should we wrap yeah. it up I think that's it for this update next time we'll be finishing the bed it will be starting to build bench seats yeah do you think we'll get the cookers the the kitchen i done think in we'll the get past one? yeah i think so it's yeah. exciting it's all coming together now it really starts to start to properly look like a camper not just a, a bit of a mess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay thank you for watching i hope it's been useful don't forget to check out those links and see you again next time oh don't forget to check out the playlist i've got a playlist of all of our videos if you're just finding us for the first time now and you want to catch up um, I'll put that link below or it'll be on the screen in a minute or as I'm talking in one of these corners. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>